Hello, Facebook world. Hello, Calvary family. How are you guys doing today? I haven't done this in a long time, so hopefully I'm doing it right. Dana's soon to join me in a moment. I see people are joining. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Good to see you, everybody. Now I have to figure out how to get the names up. Do you know how to do that, Dana? No. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Now we're getting the feed. Hey, John. Hey, Patty. How are you guys doing? I see Bill and Trish. You didn't turn it sideways? No, you can't turn it sideways because then you can't see the names as they pop up. Ow. So you have to lean in on me. My lovely wife. Hi, Amani. Hey, Charlie. What up, Charlie? Ooh. How you guys doing today? <laughs> All right, guys. Wait for a few more minutes to see everybody else popping in. Hey, Anna. How are you doing? Anna Parrot. Anna, I think you just, you're in the, are you in the Dominican or did you come back? You can write a, a message and let me know on there. I saw that you were at a baptism, but I didn't watch the full video. That's pretty cool though. Hey Debbie, how you doing? Can you guys see us okay? I just got a message saying that you guys are having a hard time seeing us. Can everybody see us? Hey Sally. Hey Jim. Guild, this club. <laughs> yeah, right. They, I think hey, Bill, can you send me a text and let me know if you're getting the video okay? Hey, guys. Okay, good. You can see me. Good. And you can hear us okay, too, right? All right, like nice and clear, good. All right, so whoever said they were having problems with their video, it probably was their phone. I referring to the fact that we're like not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really change that though, because if I try to move it, I think that. I'm gonna... okay. You're better looking. Just keep it on you. Okay, we're gonna keep it on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I've, God's really been putting something on my heart to share. Oh, good, Trish. Thank you. Um, and it's going to kind of come from Psalm 43. So I just want to start there and read Psalm 43. But first, um, Dana, would you just pray real quick? Sure. Sure. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for this time, Lord. We thank you that we do get to gather um, in every form with you, Lord God. Um, where two or more are gathered, you are here, Lord God. You're hearing our prayer, Lord God. Um, and our prayer is, Father, God, we just want to... We want to get closer to you, yes, Lord. Lord. Father, we want revelation, Lord God, that helps us to understand your heart for us, Lord God, and for um, just for your children, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your love, and we just thank you for this time, and we just ask that you, Lord, that you would fill our mouths, mm -hmm. Lord God. Uh, we're just vessels, Lord, and it's you who we want to speak. So, Father, just fill our mouths, Lord God, and, and open our hearts and ears tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I was praying and I just kept hearing the Lord uh, sort of saying to me over and over again, why so downcast, O oh, your soul? And uh, obviously that immediately brought me to Psalm uh, 43. Uh, and one of the, the running themes in Psalm 42 and 43 is... Uh, that they're in a state of sort of a, a spiritual depression. And so I'm going to read it, and then I'm just going to talk about it for a second. Um, so I'll just read the whole psalm. And we don't know who the author is exactly, but um, we think it's the sons of Korah. And actually, I thought that it was originally uh, Kona, uh, and uh, that sort of reminded me of the fact that I like Kona coffee, so it sort of stuck in my mind that way. But it's actually the sons of Korah. Um, and so Psalm 43, uh, verse 1 says this, Vindicate me, O God, and plead my case against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you rejected me? This isn't very encouraging yet, is it? 
So, uh, and then it goes on to say, why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. Oh, send out your light and your truth and let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling places. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And upon the lyre I shall praise you, O God, my God. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why are you disturbed within me? And this is the New American Standard Version, by the way. That's the, the, the one I'm reading. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. The help of my countenance, my God. And so the person gets to a great place eventually, which is that recognizing that why am I despairing? Why am I despondent? Why am I in this state of spiritual depression? I have to put my hope in God and praise him and focus on who he is and focus on his precepts and, and the fact that he's at work um, in spite of everything that, that, that I feel about what's going on in my life. And I, and I thought this was very apropos, as Pastor Clem says, says sometimes, to um, I think how a lot of people may be feeling right now, especially when you look at, and, and this is the thing that I think sort of grieves me, the way that the enemy of, of our soul, the devil, is trying to uh, sow division um, specifically, I think, into to the body of Christ, but into relationships and create a one side against the other side uh, mentality. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Sheldon. Um, and so this is where I felt like the Lord maybe wanted me to us to sort of talk about tonight in an encouraging way. Um, because it's obviously not God's will or his purpose for our lives that his children, especially in the body of Christ, are pitted against each other, um, where we're uh, unwilling, unwittingly um, allowing, uh, at times, the enemy to sort of cause us to feel certain things towards each other, uh, towards what's happening around us, and then putting people in camps, and then sort of putting ourselves in a camp. And... Um, and so I believe that the Bible teaches this, that Jesus came to establish his camp, right? And it's easy to say that. It's easy to, to, to think that. But it's another thing to operate in it um, in our lives, the way that we interact with each other on a daily basis. Jesus came to establish his kingdom. Jesus came to establish his authority. Jesus came to establish his reign. And when I was reading this psalm and I was thinking about the hope I have in God, I was thinking about the fact that, that my hope in God is that my hope has nothing to do with anything that's going on around me. My hope isn't in, uh, it isn't in the government. It isn't in um, a people group. It isn't in um, how things may or may not turn out. My hope isn't in my idea about the way things should or shouldn't turn out. My hope is in God and my hope is in his kingdom. And I think the challenge that, that, that we face um, at times is getting our, our minds to come alongside the truth of God. Uh, our minds in the, in the way that we think about things, the way we process things, the way that we, we view things. Um, and so the Bible has a lot to say about that, right? And, uh, and so we're going to uh, open up to a few scriptures about that. Did you have something to add? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I want to say this. Uh, and we're going to go to Ephesians 6.12. That our enemy, I mean, this is really important, guys. The enemy that we're fighting, the battle that we're fighting, it is not carnal. It's, and I'm going to read Ephesians 6.12 in a second. But I want to say this first. It's not your brother. It's not your sister. And it doesn't even matter what their political position is. That's, they're not your enemy. Their view is not your enemy. The devil is our enemy. Satan is our enemy. Mm -hmm. And 
in order for us to understand God's kingdom, we have to understand who our adversary, right? Like who we're fighting against. And so Ephesians 6, 12, let's go there real quick. Quicker you go there. Sure, go ahead. You can see us better, right? So uh, this is a scripture here all the time. It's a really good scripture. I love it. I'm going to start in verse 10. It says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness. And in, and in the heavenly places. And then it talks about taking up the armor of God. And I was thinking about this, and, and again, in light of what's going on, and, and, and man, if you spend more than five minutes on Facebook, you're going to get a whole lot of information, right? You're going to see a lot of opinions. You're going to see a lot of ideas. And um, man, you're going to see a lot of accusations. Uh, you're going to see a lot of hurt. You're going to see a lot of bitterness. You're going to see a lot of frustration. You're going to see a lot of um, this pitting against each other. And I'll tell you something, guys. Every bit of it, every single bit of it, is the work of the enemy. It's really important that, as far as that activity, like having an opinion isn't the work of the enemy, but allowing it to go to this place where I have this view that it's me against this person or this person against me, it's always the work of the enemy. Um, and that's why we have to always go back to God's kingdom, right? So God's kingdom, the thing that he calls us into, it operates entirely different than, uh, than the world operates. As a matter of fact, it's Thank one the of the... What was that? Thank the Lord. Yeah. It's one of the benefits that we have as believers that, I mean, I think, I know I underutilize a lot, like as far as like understanding it and then walking in it. You gotta stay in the spirit, right? You gotta stay in the spirit. <laughs> Not in the flesh. Yeah. The flesh. Don't flesh no. out. Don't flesh out. Um, so it's not always the easiest thing to do, right? Like yeah, it's a challenge, yeah. but, but the flip side of that is that there are so many benefits to God's kingdom, but more than just the benefits, God's kingdom works in a way that is almost entirely contrary to the way the world works. The, the, upside down it's an kingdom. upside down kingdom. Everything functions differently. Like so, what you just said, right? So upside down, downside up. In the in the world's view of, of the way that authority works, yeah. Um, there's like a triangle, right? And you have the CEO. Let's say it's a business structure. The CEO at top, and underneath that CEO, you have all the the managers, and underneath them, um, you have all the people that work, right? In God's kingdom, it's an upside down pyramid. Jesus is at the bottom. He's in charge. But he's at the bottom. He made himself the servant of all. He made himself the least of the, of the least. He went to the cross for us. And it's an upside down kingdom because our position, even as leadership in the body of Christ, is supposed to be that we put ourselves underneath and serve and love. And that's how you get authority in the kingdom of God. It works the exact opposite way as the way that the world works. But we have to engage it we have to operate in it. We have to actually be complicit with God's kingdom and all the things he says about the way things work. You know, we were, Dana and I have been listening to uh, the, the is it, I can't pronounce it right. It's Karis, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Karis. I see Cheris sometimes. It's Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack, yeah. So we've been listening to his teaching and something that he said really stood out to me. It was two nights ago. We were, we were just listening to it as we were going to sleep. And he started talking about healing. Obviously, his whole big thing is healing. And he started talking about how um, we view healing and how he's encountered so many people in his life that believe that their healing, um, that their sickness, I should say, or their illness was from the Lord. And that it, God is using it for their good, like he's doing something good in their life through it. And he was explaining that, yeah, God uses everything for our good. Like his purposes are that, 
whatever is happening in your life, all the goings on, good or bad, even the work of the devil, he's trying to use that for our good. So there is a truth there that God's using it for promise. our good. It's promise. his promise. Yeah. And he'll use it for our good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But the problem is that if we fundamentally believe that that sickness is from the Lord, we're actually going to grab a hold of it as if it's something that is supposed to be in our life. The problem is that it, that isn't God's will. God doesn't want us to be sick. He says it very clearly in his word all over the place. And it says that by Jesus' stripes we're, we're healed. So he went to the cross not just to purchase our salvation, but to purchase our healing. So this is the, the teaching of the Karis Healing University. But the thing that stood out to me was when he started talking about this. And then he said that, and he quoted the scripture that says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And I wrote it down somewhere. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, that Satan comes as an angel of light. He disguises himself in, in ways that are palatable to us, right? So I don't necessarily, if I knew what I was doing, if I knew I was like agreeing with the devil on something, I wouldn't do it. So he presents himself as an angel of light, something that's palatable, palatable to me that I could receive or accept and then operate it. And so healing happens to be one of those things that it's been taught so much uh, incorrect. Um, and it's usually from like a God is sovereign perspective. God is sovereign, but yet it isn't his will for us to be sick. It's one of the reasons he sent Jesus. It was for our healing. I'm not going to get the healing that God has for me. I'm not going to be able to grab a hold of that truth if I'm still holding on to the idea that it's not from the Lord or that the sickness is from the Lord. And not only am I holding on to that idea, but technically <laughs> I'm actually coming into agreement with the devil about my health. And as long as I stay in that place about my health, where I'm holding on to something that enemy's actually telling me and I believe that it's truth, I'm in bondage to it. How do I get free from it? Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says that I have to start thinking different than I used to think. I have to stop thinking the same way. I have to stop having the same thought pattern. I have to stop having the same thought patterns. I have to allow the Lord to do a different kind of work in my life. And ask him to rewire your thinking and your those patterns so that they line up with his word. Yeah. That's one of the identifiers. Yeah. It's 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 easier said than done. I, I think that one of the things is from a personal perspective over the last couple years that Dana and I have have really been going through is this idea of like of inner healing um, and it's really one of the I think that the, the big thing that like going through inner healing accomplishes is that it helps us to identify the lies right so what do I believe that um that doesn't line up with God's word what do I believe about other people that doesn't line up with God's word how am I living my life in my thought life? Am I thinking about things about other people that don't line up with God's word? And these are all like signs that there's something like uh, not right, right? About yeah. the way I'm thinking. Like sometimes these things are very, like, you know, they're hidden. It's a deception. So, so a lot of times, like, we have it, things line up here, here, and here in our thinking, yet, like, there's this one area where there's a way in. Um, where we believe something that is con is like contrary to what we actually believe about God's word, um, but we believe it because it's not it's it's hidden it's a twist there's like a there's a reason uh, what's the word there's a justification for why it's okay in this one circumstance or in this one issue for me to feel this way or think this way or believe this yeah. thing. Yeah, I think of the word triggered right. Yeah. This is like over here all the time, like I've been triggered and there's all these like uh, parody videos on Facebook about people that are triggered by things. Um, the world will tell you um, that if you're triggered, that that means that there is something wrong with the other person because they're triggering you. But God says, yes, yeah, Sheldon, that's where we're going, by the way. <laughs> God says that, um, that, uh, in his word, and I'm, I'm going to kind of bear it out a little bit. I encourage you guys to dig into it and look a lot of this stuff up.
But God's word says that, I shouldn't say God's word says, God's word teaches that if I'm being triggered by something, then that means that there is something in me that God wants to deal with. There's a revealing that I'm having an issue with something because God wants to transform me. It's like an alarm. It's an alarm. It's a little alarm. It's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody did something today and I was triggered. Oh. Somebody cut me off in traffic. I got upset well, <laughs> with them yeah. and it's their fault that I'm upset. And God's like, no man, you got upset at that person who cut you off because you have an issue that you have to deal with. Your reaction to that situation did not have to be what it was. Well, and if we hum the more that we humbly come before the Lord, asking him to bring revelation of these things in our lives, Lord, search my heart, you know, um, show me, show me, Lord. The more that we're open and, and listening for that, the easier it is. Because sometimes I would say, Lord, why can't it be like sirens, like the red flag, sirens, horns, like... Why can't it be so obvious? How did I walk around not realizing all this time that, you know, I had this thing going on in my mind that didn't line up with your word. Um, but then I realized, well, it's that I have to tune in. Like I have to participate. I have to even be aware that this is something I can participate in. So like, if this is new to you, please make sure to like, you know, contact us. You have a, a, tons of leaders at yeah. Calvary who, who, or wherever you're planted who can share with you, but you know, you've got to understand the way it works and be open to it and um, listening so that you catch these flags by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, by the way, that gives you that little like, that light, like shining a light, like, oh, like a little spotlight on it when that flag goes up. You know, God doesn't, it's not God's will that, that we're triggered by things. So like I know for myself that if I'm if I'm constantly triggered by stuff like especially things that other people do, I'm pretty miserable, pretty much most of the time in my life. Like if I'm consistently triggered by stuff, mm -hmm. and God doesn't want us to be triggered by stuff. His will for you is your actual peace. Yeah. So triggering and yeah. peace don't work together. They they literally contradict each other. And the solution isn't to try to get, and I know sometimes we think this, right? The solution to my triggering is that, <laughs> is that everybody that is around me just did what I, I thought that they should do. If I could just get them to do what I think that they should and do. So, sometimes that's what we do. We actually like attack them or try to like, you know, or try to show them. And it's like, no, look at, you know, what's yeah. going on with you. So obviously the solution isn't that everybody's going to conform to my idea about the way they should treat me or they should act. And as a matter of fact, you're gonna, we're going to experience a whole lot of stuff that has the potential to trigger us. God is like, he's like, I care about you so much. Yeah. I care about your like, peace and your life and your livelihood and your interactions with your brothers and sisters in Christ yeah. Yeah. and your interactions in the world that I don't want you to be continually triggered by stuff. So he's at work in our lives, right? He's working things out in a way. And I'll tell you something. It's probably contrary to your flesh, and it's contrary to the way that you are probably used to living your life in the world is if, in a way of like uh, just on a normal basis. Like if you're just walking through your life, minding your own business, mm -hmm. the way that God has us to operate most of the time is in a way contrary to that. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to get us to do what? He's trying to get us to think talked about it before he wants us to think differently mm -hmm. you know one of the things that we talked about was just a moment ago was that that satan is the great deceiver he disguises himself as an angel of light and i was talking to will um uh will this morning will's a leader at our church uh will rodriguez and we were talking about this whole idea that as you get into the end days the bible teaches us that there'll be such a great deception mm -hmm. that um that even there's a possibility, the Bible says, or it doesn't say there's a possibility. It says that it's going to be such a great deception that even the elect could be deceived. And this is like the end of days, like in the Bible, right? And this is actually Jesus teaching. So it's pretty profound that he says that it's even like so extreme that the elect could be uh, deceived. The elect are the, the children of God. It's the church, right? Mm -hmm. Those who belong to Christ. And we were talking about this the other night, right? And we were talking about the fact, like, I don't want... 
I don't want to be deceived. And I'm not saying this from a fearful, fearful perspective. I'm not saying that like that, that, that you are deceived or that you're walking deception or that I'm walking deception. But at the same time, I want to have such an awareness spiritually about what's going on that I'm not able to be deceived even for a moment about what's really happening spiritually. Yeah. You're going to say something. No, I was oh. just thinking a lot about the conversation. Yeah. And how I started with me saying that I used to pray often when I would read in, you know, Revelation and I'd read end times. Like, please, Lord, just don't, I just don't want to be, like, deceived, like, believing I'm good with you, but I'm not. Yeah. So, thank you, Lord, for all the trials that help us to see. Yeah. And to learn how to, you know, let him search our hearts. And yeah. To recognize that. So. But it's not right. We're not lined up with God's heart and his yeah. spirit. Yeah. So. So how do we know? Like this, this is the thought process. Like how do you know? Like how do you know you're in the right place? And, and and especially guys, when you look at what's going on all around you, because certainly no matter what position you are taking politically, or in the world with your friends, with your, your the people that you're in close relationship with, you're certainly gonna feel like at moments. Because I feel like this that man, am I crazy, <laughs> or are they crazy? You know, like the people that are like that I don't agree with. Right? Like, who's crazy? Like, who, who's got it right? Who's got it wrong? Uh, and so these are like thoughts. You know, it's just you think about it because I don't want to be wrong about stuff. I don't want to, and I don't want to um, say things that are incorrect or especially, obviously, unbiblical or um, be in a place, even like of myself, like you could go on Facebook and just read a few things and experience hurt just because there's a position that you take, right? Like that you believe in that's being attacked and you then you take it personal. Man, there's so or much somebody is attacking. Or somebody <laughs> is attacking you. Which I've had at times. I'm not I've gotten a lot better, right? But sometimes I have a problem like with the comment on Facebook or a response to things. So I have to pray through that. But anyway, so the scripture that uh, Sheldon uh, put on there, and I'm just trying to see what I we're doing for some. Uh, I'm actually trying to find this. Um I just want to see how we're doing for time. Because I don't have any way to look at it. Hold on one second, guys. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like, Lord, if there is a deception in my life, if there, if there is something, this is my prayer a lot, if there's something that I'm not seeing right or clear, show me, like, show me what is truth. Show me how I'm supposed to, to walk this out according to your word. And the Lord, you know, really kept bringing me back to this particular scripture, uh, which Sheldon put up there. And it's Romans 12, uh, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. It's such a popular scripture. You guys know it. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And this is the part that stood out to me. And do not be conformed to this world. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. But I want to go back to the first part of verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world. And... That word conformed is an interesting word because it implies, I was doing a little bit of a study here, that, um, that there's something that I believe and know to be true, like there's something inside of me that I'm convicted about, and externally, the goings on around me are causing me to conform to, to something that I'm not necessarily in agreement with. The problem is that if I do that, I'm, I'm conflicted, 
like I'm conflicted in my inner being because there's something I know to be true, but I'm allowing myself to conform to something else. And it doesn't specify what that is. The scripture is used a lot, you know, to obviously talk about deep rooted sin issues. Like don't conform to the pattern of the world. Like don't, don't do the things the world does. And that's a good application uh, for this scripture. But another good application, which um, I highly value and I apply to what's happening today, is that God is saying, do not be conformed to this world functionally, like the way it operates. And I was talking about God's kingdom before. God's kingdom is here and the world is here and they don't work the same way. Functionally, fundamentally, at every single level, they do not work the same way. God is calling us into his kingdom and he's, a, he's called us to work and operate in his kingdom according to his kingdom. And there's so many benefits to his kingdom. I talked about healing. I talked, there's peace. There is the, the manifest power and presence of God. There's the fact that when we uh, experience God's grace, it becomes contagious to the people around us where it doesn't just affect our life, but it begins to affect their life. That's God's kingdom. That's how it works. It draws people to him without even saying words sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. When we react to people in the opposite spirit to which they're coming at us with, that's God's grace. Yeah. And that actually is what has the power to transform and change lives. It's what Jesus did all the time. And it's almost all, almost all the interactions Jesus had with people were that he, he engaged them different than they engaged him. And he applied grace and love and preference to them in the midst of all these things that are going on. And he was horribly mistreated, right? Like he was, um, I mean, and even throughout the whole, his whole entire ministry, there were all these moments where he was constantly questioned about what he was teaching. And I don't remember reading anywhere where Jesus got defensive about the question, right? He was perfect. He was perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's not, I'm not like, going to lie. I'm not going to, I'm going to get defensive sometimes when I'm questioned, right? And I'm sure you guys feel the same way. But Jesus didn't get defensive. And not only did he not get defensive, but he applied grace to these people's lives. And it, their lives were transformed by his grace. That's how God's kingdom works. That's how God's kingdom works in our lives. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it is how it works. And so it says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. And so the other things that I was thinking about, we talk about being triggered, right, by things. And I, and I find that in my life, when I look at, when I get triggered by something, let's say that we're talking about marriage, right? Like, just like the way that Dana and I relate to, the way that Dana and I relate to each other. It's so easy to like, be triggered by your partner or something. <laughs> to be triggered. I'll use Dana with me. I trigger her, I know, yeah, I trigger her just and she triggers me at times. So, um, the thing that I find in my life when I'm being triggered is that there's probably a hurt there. Or there's probably unforgiveness there. And there's probably judgment there. And, and sometimes this be started before that person. Yeah. 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 Like you saw a relationship yeah. like your parents and yeah. you were judging. Yeah. But Yeah, you can learn you can learn to just do that from from family. Um, unintentional. Uh, you know, just generational hurt or whatever. Um, like if you can't figure out where you're like, what's my issue with my spouse in this area? Yeah. I don't feel like I have an issue. Ask yeah. the Holy Spirit to show you. It might be, it might be you judge somebody else in their marriage. It's, see, there's a reason God tells us not to judge so many yeah. in so many ways, a million ways and times in the word. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you don't express. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah. advocating oh, not no. expressing yeah. or communicating your needs or the things that are going on in your life. And certainly, if you are being triggered, um, God wants us to deal with our own issue. But or that doesn't mean you don't so advocate yeah. for your needs or things that are going on in your life. But just deal with your issue yeah, first. Deal so you with don't your have issue to sit first. There and shame when, you realize. when I'm triggered uh, by something, and then I try to deal with it from a triggered state. That typically yeah, that doesn't well. work out too well <laughs> in our relationship, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, and so God says, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world is obvious, guys. 
um, it, it, again, I was talking about myself, but it's true for all of us. It's really like the pattern of this world is accusation, judgment, mm -hmm. bitterness, hurt, and then just really like sort of operating from that vantage point mm -hmm. um, outward to other people and then sort of casting aspersions onto the other people like they're doing that to us. But the reality is this is all the work of the enemy trying to create division mm -hmm. and strife and enmity and cause us especially in the body of Christ to begin to divide for reasons that when you really break it down to it shouldn't even be there that's not God's kingdom and it's not how he operates so how do you resolve all that really that's the question how do we get to the place where we're on the same page where we're working together where we have differences of opinion at times but we don't allow those differences to trigger us or cause us to have an issue with our brother or our sister going to sin yeah. to go into a sinful state That's, which affects our yeah. relationship with God which yeah. makes it even harder to hear him telling us yeah. what the problem is and, and I want to qualify this I, I am not uh -huh. I am definitely somebody that can go into a sinful state in this way so when I say sin mm -hmm. I'm applying across the board I include me I definitely include Dana <laughs> I include wow. we're all in the same boat together um, definitely but the answer is the same for all of us. It's first of all, it's obviously Jesus Christ. He's the answer and he's the one that um, that has, if we believe in him, if we've confessed him as our Lord and our savior and our king, um, and He has he's Lord of our life, then we have the benefit of being transformed, right? On the inside and having him live inside of us. But the Bible says here that even in that state, right? So you're saved. You know Christ. You may have you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. There is another process that God brings us through, and it identifies it right here. It says, "But be so. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world." So, let's. You get saved. You come to know Christ. Everything comes along to, like with that. The the instant transformation of your being. You've been born again and made new, but your thought patterns still have to shift in your life. So in other words, you can come to know Christ and, and know him as your Lord and Savior and King, but your thoughts could not necessarily line up with God's word, and they may not line up with God's kingdom. And that's really important to know because if I believe, so if I come to Christ, right, and I believe that my thoughts are instantly changed, some of them are, but there's a lot that aren't. But if I am holding on to this idea that everything I think is correct, Man, I'm, I'm actually in a place where I could easily be deceived by something. God has us to go through this process of renewing our mind to think different about things, to not think the same way, and especially to not think the way the world thinks, to not operate the way the world operates. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And so, man, I wanna know, I wanna know God's will. Like, I wanna know what he's doing at any moment, at any time, and I wanna be involved in it. But in order for that to happen, I have to be like, man, I re recognize that my own thoughts, the way I think, isn't what God is looking for. He wants to make all those things new all the carnal ways that I view things new and cause me to see things differently. And to be honest with you, in my experience, that's the only way that I start to see things the way God sees things. And it really isn't even my thoughts, it's his thoughts. I start to see his intentions for people. I start to see his love for people. Mm -hmm. I start to see his work for people. Mm -hmm. I start to see situations differently. Like even in my own life, in our lives, the way God's working things out, I could be very frustrated at times with my lack of patience, with <laughs> how things are happening in my life, right? No, and not No, me. not me. <laughs> and there are circumstances that come up on a regular basis for me where I feel frustrated because I'm like a go person. I'm like, I need to get it done person. So when obstacles pop up in my life, I'm like, man, this, this is ridiculous. Why is this happening? <laughs> And God's, and, and I'll tell you something, in this particular area of my life, especially recently, there have been so many things that have happened where um, 
the end result of that obstacle that I perceived to be an obstacle was a blessing yeah, and I couldn't possibly that. see it mm -hmm. when it happened. Um, but what God wants like to do, time. yeah, big time, like big things, right? Uh, business relationships, you know, uh, Dean and I transitioned from doing the cleaning company. We talked about this before when I've, we've spoken um, to doing general contracting and God's just been honestly setting, setting us up with so many um, relationships that are expanding this business that he's called us to now. Um, and some at times looked like an, an obstacle. An obstacle. And, it, and they were in a way, but for a purpose so that something else could pan out in that. And it was an even bigger open door. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I think we all have testimonies like that. Yeah, we do have to, uh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But God wants to get us to the place mm -hmm. where, we walk where, we, them, yeah. where we're walking mm -hmm. out our life in such a way, and I, and I say this to myself more than anybody, mm -hmm. where when the obstacles come, my immediate, like, immediate go-to isn't mm -hmm. to get frustrated, but it's to think to myself, wow, what, what's God doing right now? That's keeping your peace, too. Because the Bible says that all things work together yeah. for the good of those who know Him and, and are called according to His purposes, so the obstacles in my life have to be from God. There has to be something he's doing. Now, maybe he is just teaching me like patience at times, yeah. but there are other things. And so I could definitely miss it well, if I me, don't, if I, I, well, I almost want to finish this thought, ahead. if I don't allow my mind to think differently. See, this goes yeah. along with a scripture that says that be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that which the will of God is. So if I start seeing obstacles mm -hmm. in my life as opportunities to what God's trying to accomplish, and they are what God's doing. I not only get the benefit of of the the blessing or of what the obstacle is supposed to be, but instead of being a reluctant participant in the process, I become a willing participant. And I'll tell you, you something: enjoy it. I get to enjoy it. I get the peace of God, and and I get to kind of like smell the roses a little bit, which is hard for me to do. Where I get to just kind of sit back and let God do what He wants to do in my life. Let Him be God. Let him be in control, in charge, and let him work things out according to his plan and his will. It goes kind of right back to Psalm 43. We read right, right at the beginning of the whole thing today, which is why despondent all my soul. Put your hope in God. Know that he's advocating for us, that he's working for us. Yeah, I would just say that I think for me what would be, what's been highlighted through what we're talking about was that um, a lot of these times were opportunities um, in the in when I walk it out in peace I get to see and know and trust that this is God showing his great love for me like he just wants to show us he wants to lavish his love on us and he wants to show us how he sees us and how much he loves us and how um, how much he's for us so that now um, when, you know, I'm walking through something, instead of being like, God, can't I just, like, can't this happen a different way? Like, it's cool that I know you're going to work it out, but couldn't it have been easier? Could we not have to feel like, oh, we're waiting till the last minute to see that it's going to be okay? Um, but now I'm like, oh no, I love this because it's exciting because I trust you and your intentions toward me. And I, and I get to see like, Oh, look at what my dad's doing like this is his love for me so honestly I'm saying that because I, I know I've been talking to a lot of people lately where it's the same challenge it's like I feel like what God is doing right now one of the things he's doing is he's trying to show us individually like I like his its identity but it's specifically our identity in him and like our relationship with him like how just how unconditional his love is for us and how he views us and who we are, you know? And like, so we can walk through these things and we can be focused on, oh Lord, what are you doing? You're doing something with me, uniquely with me, because I'm unique, you know? Um, and we're learning through it. We're learning about his love for us and his provision. And, and but it's these things, it's these lies, it's these distractions um, that are supposed to stop us from getting this. So that's why we want to walk. We don't want to walk in the flesh. Like, I don't want to walk in the flesh and miss out on knowing what God is trying to, to speak over me, you know? Yeah. Um, because when I'm in the flesh, I'm angry or, or hurt or sad or worried. I'm walking in fear. And I, 
And those are bad in, in and of themselves, but then I'm also missing like this, this yeah. beautiful aspect of um, the experience yeah. that we're walking through, you yeah. know? Um, and so I want to go back to something real quick and, and, and just kind of like address it and kind of bring, maybe bring everything to a, sort of a, a conclusion. Um, so there's this thing of renewing our minds, right? And, and we just talk about how important it is. Like, mm -hmm. I need my mind to be renewed. I need to think differently. We all do, mm -hmm. um, truthfully. Because, I mean, I think that no matter what camp you're in, if you're in a camp <laughs> um, that isn't just the kingdom of God, then, then you might be in the wrong camp, right? Um, and uh, um, and I'm not advocate. I'm not advocating uh, in any way that we don't vote the way that the word tells us to vote or any of those things. I'm just talking about like like our position, especially spiritually, um, and then and the way we interact with each other. So that's really the focus. What I what I what God really put on my heart on our hearts to share about tonight. But man, Satan is. He's so tricky. Um, he uses things that are palatable uh, to us to create deception, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially if we carry our carnal thoughts from our pre-life, pre-Christ life into our, our current Christ life. So if, if, I, um, if I'm still thinking the same way I used to think about things, that's pretty much a good indication that God wants to change those thought patterns. Um, the other indication is, is triggering. We talked about that. If I'm triggered by something, that is actually a sign that there is a thought pattern in my life. There's a deception. There's a lie that I believe. It, it may be rooted in something like unforgiveness and all those things, but it, it's definitely there. But then, the, but then there are just the basic things the Bible teaches us. I'm, I'll talk about unforgiveness for a second. And we've been talking about this a lot at church. Pastor Clemens has been doing an excellent job of going through this whole thing with what the Bible teaches about unforgiveness. I'm just going to quote one scripture because it's so serious to me. That Jesus said that if we don't forgive, that we won't be forgiven. Man, and that's Jesus who said that. It's not even one of the apostles writing the letters, right? That's the words he spoke. Red um, letters. Or the red letters. The, they the red wrote letters. the letters, but it's what he spoke, no, right? It's the red letters. Oh, the red letters. Um, his words. It's his words. Now, obviously, if you look at that, at that that statement in the light of all Scripture, we can see that he probably didn't mean you're, you're not going to go to heaven. Although, I won't say with 100% certainty that I know that to be true. I just, when I apply the whole scripture Bible, scripturally, scripture, scripture, yeah. scripture yeah. interpret Scripture, I don't believe that's what it's saying. But what ends up happening when we do not... When we hold on to unforgiveness and bitterness towards other people in our life, and we hold on to hurt, so hurt is the root system, the root of it. Unforgiveness is the symptom of it. Um, we have to deal with the unforgiveness, right? But if we're holding on to that, we don't get the benefit of forgiveness in our life. There's no, there's no peace. We find that even though I have unforgiveness, say it's with Dana, let's say I have an issue with my wife, my lovely, beautiful bride, and I'm holding on to it, what I start to find in my life is that I become suspicious and accusatory to, in a systematic way, it starts to just going out to every single person in my life. I start having the same issue with everybody, and it really started with Dana. And so until I deal with my issue with my, my wife and my marriage of unforgiveness or bitterness, I will be unable to operate in forgiveness and love and grace towards virtually everybody in my life to a certain extent. I will struggle in it. I will not have peace. So there's all these benefits that God of knowing God, of being forgiven by Jesus Christ, and by being a child of God. When I hold on to unforgiveness towards one person in my life, those benefits, the implications of them in my life, the the blessings of them are diminished, and I start to lose out on things. and And God does not want me to be in that state. He wants me to be in a state of peace. It's his very best for me. And in order for that to happen, again, I have to recognize that my thought pattern, the way I, the, my reaction to things, my reaction to something my wife might do, or someone in the, that, I, that I'm looking at Facebook might be saying, is, is important to God. And it's important to me for my own relationship with God. And he wants me to operate in the full measure of blessing, the fullness of of blessing that God that He has for me, that the reason He went to the, the cross for me. Um, 
And so, uh, again, it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, um, I try, I'm sorry, 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And the, 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 the last sort of line of thought that I had on this whole thing was, was this. The way that we know um, that we know God, right? Like we have a, we have had a, when we come to know Christ, we have a supernatural experience with the living God. We're not, when we accept him, when we make him the Lord of our life, he comes in and he transforms us. He makes us born again. He causes us to be a different person than we were before. Um, but again, we can carry those thoughts from our old life into our new life. Um, but what God wants us to, to do in the process of changing all of those things is to know his word, right? To know his word, to read his word, to be in his word. But I will say that that's not enough. And, and, and we've heard Pastor Clem teach about this, right? Satan knows the word. He, like, he probably knows it better than, than I do. He like, definitely knows it better than I do, than any of us do. And he, he comes as an angel of light. He uses things um, that uh, in, his, in God's word to, cu- to, to, to cause us to be justified in our positions. To feel, to feel justified feel so in our positions. <laughs> What does God want? How do you how do you stop that process of doing that, and guys? It really goes back to the same thing. Um, it's all the things that that Jesus taught about. Um, like, what are the symptoms going on in your life? What are you dwelling on? What are you thinking about? What are what's your reaction to the things going on around you? Um, Ask the Lord. Like, yeah. Like, and this is a word of encouragement because I will say this. You know, it's like, like, is this really encouraging? He's smiling and he sounds like he's happy, but he's saying some You're things funny. that aren't really like that like, great to hear. <laughs> like Satan is the deceiver, and you might be deceived. No, this, and all is, this is encouraging. It is an encouraging yeah. word. No, it's encur- that's why I was saying that yeah. because we want to experience God. Like we can't fully yeah. experience God if we're if we're stuck in the fear and the anger and the whatever it is, bitterness. That's what I was saying. Like, we don't get that experience with him. The good stuff he wants to do and speak yeah. to us, do in us, speak to, over us, show us. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Absolutely. That's encouraging. It is encouraging. It's freedom so that we can not have that yeah. wall between us and him and, and us and our brothers and sisters. I, I, I just go back to the, the first scripture, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it one more time. It's Psalm, it's Psalm 43. Uh, it's verses. Um, I'm just going to read the last few verses. As I'm going there slowly. Um, Here we go. Psalm 43. um, And then verse 5, it says, Why are you in despair, O my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Guys, I I will just say this in closing. uh, it's when, when you, I think that when we get to heaven and we get the, to look at the video of our life, like the film of all the goings on, God is going to sort of maybe reveal to us oh, <laughs> how he was at work um, all the while that we lived on this earth and show us all, because we don't really I know. I'm so interested. You don't know. Like you don't know the ways that God's advocating for you. I don't know. There's so much happening all around us all the time. It's not. God's kingdom is not carnal. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We have to get into a kingdom mindset. All of the things that that are going on around us, the, the, the division, the accusation, all these things, that is being perpetrated by the enemy of our soul, the enemy of our soul, the devil. He wants us to be in a state of hatred and anger and frustration. God wants us to be in a state of peace and grace and love and preference. And that is the simple truth. And that is, those are the distinguishing characteristics of the way the world operates and the way the kingdom of God operates. So something really practical that probably a lot of us are familiar with, but it's worth mentioning here. You know, like, don't forget that when we're talking to God, he already knows what's going on, right? So, like, we can't hide anything from him anyway. So, why don't we just say, Lord, like, this helps me, you know? 
Lord, I just, today, I'm just asking you, God, to help me to walk in the Spirit and, and stay in the Spirit and not walk in that flesh. I crucify the flesh in the name of Jesus. We get to do that, you know. I crucify my flesh in Jesus' name, Lord. God, I lay it down, and I just want to walk and be in tune with your spirit today, Lord God. I want you to fill my mouth with your words. I want you to fill my mind with your thoughts. Um, you know, prayer works. It really works. And, and I'll be the first to say that, like, how often I'm like, I'm, I'm in the moment and the alarm or the flag is going off. And I'm like, oh, how did I get here? Oh, I lost sight of, like, I, I wasn't really communicating with God. I got into my flesh. And then that gave more opportunity for me to, like, be in all these things, like, Things that yeah. afflictions of the flesh, anger, fear, whatever it is. Um, but just if you ask God that in the morning, yeah. if you start your day that way, I mean, we, I'm sure we all know that we've experienced. Like, if you ask God, you know, you'll look back at the end of the day and you'll be like, oh man, that was like a pretty good day. I wonder what I did different. You know, sometimes you're like, I felt good today. What did I eat today? I should eat those things tomorrow. Um, but spiritually, it's like, oh, it's always, oh yeah, in my prayer time this morning, I was asking you for these things, Lord, and look, go figure, like, it happened. You helped me. You strengthened me. He's a powerful God, and we have access to that. He's, he tells us that. So um, that's my encouragement. That's something that I'm always um, trying to, you know, when I do it, it works. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like that, that advice. It's, it's so, and it's so applicable to this. Um, you can trust God. You can trust the way He works things out in our life and the fact that He's at work. Mm -hmm. And you can look at all the things in your life that are going on, that God is trying to use them for His good. It doesn't mean that His intention is that they're there. It just means He's working them out. So we have to ask ourselves, if I'm going through my life and I don't have peace, or, or there's, or, and as we've talked about this whole time, there's other symptoms of my life um, that bear out that there is something that God wants me to deal with. You can go to God. And you can dialogue with God. Lord, um, show me why I'm being triggered. Show me if there's unforgiveness. David did it all the, all the time. He says, show me if there's any wicked way in me. Show me if there's something in my life. This was David. Like, like Jesus sits on the throne of David. He doesn't even sit on his own throne. This is how important David was to history and time and everything. But David constantly went back to this place of like, try me. Look in my spirit. Show me if there's something going on. So guys, I just want to encourage you as we're going through this season, get with God. Get into his word, but be open to the possibility <laughs> that, that, that there are ways that you're thinking that may not be what God has for you. There may be thought processes, about, especially about other people, that God wants to transform. He wants to make your mind new. He wants to cause you to think differently about things. And if, if we allow the Holy Spirit, who is the participatory, participatory um, part of the triune Godhead, um, if we allow the Holy Spirit to, to have room in our life to show us what is going on with our thoughts, if, I'm, if I am deceived about something, if I am thinking the wrong way, yeah. Um, God, when we make room for him to come in and transform us and transform our thoughts, he will do what he says he will do. He will do it. Last thing I want to say on that note is, um, just like a friendly reminder that, cause I've been there too. We're all in the same boat with living in the flesh, living in the world and need to walk in the spirit, right? A lot of times the things that I actually do need to let go of and like, let God show me a new, like the truth. A lot of times it's like, there's this battle. Like I don't want to let go. Like, and sometimes when I, what happens right before I finally let go is it comes down to the Lord highlighting me. What do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? Like if this is really truth and it's really God, it's good for me. It's the best for me. It's better than where I'm at now. But like, there's something that it's like, uh, it's like this revelation you'll get when you when you get there. You know, you're like, wait, what do I have to lose? Why am I holding on so tight? Why don't I want to let go of this 
pattern of thought or this hurt or this anger or bitterness or this idea that I'm right in this, in this thing. What do I have to lose? I can always go back if it was wrong and if it didn't. Yeah, like yeah, if it didn't bring freedom <laughs> and it wasn't really God, because if it's God, it always brings freedom. I can always go back. Why am I so afraid to just let go and, and see what God wants to do? See if, if I receive this and it brings peace and truth and freedom. You'll feel it. It's freedom. Yeah. So I just want to remind you that like sometimes we, I've seen people, you know, like we're counseling with them and like they get so close, they come right to the edge of the cliff and they're ready to jump. And they're like, oh, wait, you know, I don't know, you know, and I'm, and I'm saying them, but I'm saying me too, you know, uh, and it's just this deception that, you know, well, just try it. What do you have to lose? You're not going to die. <laughs> you could die, but you are dying. Like there's a spiritual death. Well, you are death. actually dying. There's well, a, we, yeah, but you, no, there's a spiritual dying. death yeah. and you're missing out on that freedom and you're not walking at yeah, all. Yeah, an actual peace spiritual truth, death. You're not accessing it. But there's also, yeah, like, the death that flesh. we want, yeah. if you want to crucify flesh, that's yeah. flesh, I don't need it, it weighs me down. Yeah. Who doesn't want to lose smoke? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> lose the flesh. I'll, I'll, I'd like it to lose that down. kind of spiritual weight for All sure. Right. Let's close that. Yeah, we got to close. Well, we love you guys. Um, oh, that's good, Cornelia. I like that. Um, oh, I love her. So, uh, we love you guys. I'm just going to pray to close, and we're so glad you decided to join us this week. Pray for Clem and Connie and the whole uh, Salerno family as they're on vacation, that they continue to enjoy themselves. Um, and thanks to Pastor Clem uh, and Connie for giving Dana yeah, and I the opportunity to share our hearts tonight. We love you guys. Um, so I'm going to pray real quick. Lord Jesus, Father God, uh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you to do your work in all the different parts of the that triune God that we serve. Um, the participatory part of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you to just move in our hearts and our minds to transform our thoughts. Lord, I pray that if there is any wicked or anxious way in me or anybody else listening, that they would, um, that their minds would be transformed. There would be, even now, the, 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 there would be a sense of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the living God, and that, that we would be complicit, that we would let you do what you're already trying to do. We don't have to do much. We just have to let you work in our lives. Lord God, I just pray that as we come to the, 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 the realization of the freedom that the cross purchased for us, that we do not have to be bound to those thought patterns anymore, that we can be transformed by knowing your word, by letting your Holy Spirit change our thought patterns supernaturally. Lord God, we choose to do that even now. We let go of the bitterness. We let go of the anger. We let go of the unforgiveness so that we can be heard by our living God, by the Father God, so that we could be, our voices are, um, that they reach the heavens and that there's nothing in the way, that there's nothing in the way of us and you, God, that there's nothing in the way between us and the people around us, that we are connected properly to you, your kingdom, and your children, mm -hmm. your sons and your daughters, the people that you brought into our lives so that we could be in deep relationship loving relationship, nurturing relationship. We just thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for your church, your body. And we, I just pray a blessing on all these people and on us for the rest of the week that we would be productive for your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Thanks, guys. Amen. We Happy love night. you guys. Love Have you. a good night. I think the bottom fits. Finish.